chapter 37 verses 1 through 14 the hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley 
It was full of bones. He led me all around them. They were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together bone to bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come up on them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Somebody's calling my name Hush, hush Somebody's calling my name Hush, hush Somebody's calling my name Oh my Lord, oh my Lord What shall I do, what shall I do Sounds like Jesus, somebody's called my name. Sound like Jesus, somebody's calling my name. Sound like Jesus, somebody's calling my name. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I Death come creeping in my room. So one morning, death come creeping in my room. So one morning, death come creeping in my room. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? 
I'm so glad got my religion on time. I'm so glad I got my religion on time. I'm so glad I got my religion on time. Oh, my Lord. Trouble don't last always. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. I'm so glad trouble don't last always. Oh, my Lord, oh, my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? Hush, somebody's calling my name. Hush, why don't you hush? Somebody's calling my name. Hush, hush, somebody's calling my name. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? Good morning. On this second Sunday after the Epiphany of our Lord and the Sunday before the federal holiday commemorating the life and ministry of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. My sermon, my sermon today is titled Faithfulness in a Graveyard. Faithfulness in a Graveyard from the passage that read by Sister Dorothy from Ezekiel 37. The prophet Ezekiel whose name is taken from a Hebrew word meaning God will strengthen, came from a devout family. His father was a priest. Ezekiel was taken captive by the Babylonians 11 years before the final siege and destruction of Jerusalem. And he settled in a community of Jewish exiles on the banks of the Cheba river or canal of Babylonia. That is where Ezekiel, the exiled son of a priest, received his call from God in the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, which would have been around 592 BC. Ezekiel's ministry to the exiled Jewish community in Babylon extended for more than 22 years, and he was consulted by the elders of that community on numerous occasions. He was married and had a house in Babylon, but his wife died suddenly, and even at his wife's death, his bereavement took on prophetic meaning. He was ordered by God not to go through the usual signs of mourning as a sign to the exile community. The book of prophecy that bears Ezekiel's name is remarkable for its many visions. And Ezekiel's name will be forever be part of black sacred music in the African-American tradition because of a spiritual titled Ezekiel Saw the Wheel. Ezekiel Saw the Wheel, way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel Saw the Wheel, way in the middle of the air. I vividly remember hearing that spiritual sung by male quartet groups that competed during meetings of the New Farmers of America, the NFA, which was the Black 
counterpart for the Future Promise of America, the FFA. Uh, I remember singing it and hearing the black quartet groups of male students sing it when I attended a segregated high school Oklahoma, at Oklahoma, Arkansas, Simmons High School in the spring of 1965. Ezekiel's book of prophecy has some of the most graphic, detailed, and layered visions one reads in the Hebrew Testament. And the vision of the Valley of Dry Bones that we find in Ezekiel 37 is an example. That vision is introduced by a phrase we often find in Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me. In this vision, the Spirit of God placed the prophet in the middle of a valley full of bones and posed this question. Mortal, can these bones live? What a weird question. Who would dare ask if dead, dry, disjointed, and fleshless bones can live. Why would anyone suggest that they could live? Why would anyone who questioned whether they could live be taken seriously? The idea that dead, dry, disjointed, and fleshless bones can live is so absurd so fanciful, so outlandish, so preposterous, so ridiculous that anyone who admits to believing it would immediately be branded a fool. But in the vision, Ezekiel did not respond to the Spirit's question that way. The prophet knew better than to ridicule the Spirit of God for asking even a question that seemed that outlandish. Dr. Gardner Taylor has said that Ezekiel, instead of dismissing the question out of hand as absurd, punted. Ezekiel punted by responding, O oh Lord, you know. <laughs> oh Lord, you know. Pun. Mark those words. Oh Lord God, you know. They teach us to be careful not to confuse human experience with God's knowledge. Yes, experience can be a good teacher. However, the knowledge we gain from experience does not exhaust all that we know, let alone all that can be known. Every new discovery, every new invention, every new method, every new process, every new idea defies experience. The airplane defied human experience until the Wright brothers. Until the Wright brothers. The idea that humans could fly was absurd, outlandish, preposterous, ridiculous. Peanut butter did not exist before George Washington Carver. Who would have looked at a peanut and thought you could spread it like cream, uh. the idea that peanut could become a spread was outlandish. Uh. Beloved, our experiences do not define our potential. I'm telling you something now. Uh. Our experiences do not 
define our potential. Our experiences do not dictate our destiny. Instead of writing people off as beyond redemption, beyond recovery, and beyond worthiness of liberation, it is better for us to follow the example of Ezekiel who said, Oh Lord God, you know. Oh Lord God, you know. When he was asked, Mortal, can these bones live? It is better to punt than to pontificate. It is better to punt than to pronounce people beyond hope. It is better to punt because human experience should never be confused with God's knowledge. So let us learn to say with Ezekiel, Oh Lord God, you know. Oh Lord God, you know if this dead dry, desolate, and disjointed looking situation can be redeemed. Oh, Lord God, you know if there is a way out of this no way out looking situation. Oh, Lord God, you know if there is a way up from this pit of sorrow that we are in. Oh, Lord God, you know if there is a dawn beyond this midnight. You know if there is an oasis in this desert and an ocean yet beyond the oasis. You know, oh, Lord God, if there is recovery from this hurt. You know, oh, Lord God, you know if there is justice beyond this oppression. You know, oh Lord God, you know if there is a triumph beyond this tragedy. Oh, oh Lord God, you know. Let us refuse to say what cannot be done merely because we have not experienced it done before. Ah, we need to get rid of the seven last words of the church. We have never done it this way before. <laughs> Beyond that, human experiences Catch this, human experiences, however real, and even when they are tragic, are not greater than God's plans and God's purposes. Let me say it again in case you missed it. Human experiences, however real and tragic, are not greater than God's plans and God's purposes. Beginning at verse 11 of the passage about Ezekiel's vision of the valley of dry bones, we find this comment which the prophet attributes to the Spirit of God. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. Oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, 
the Lord have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Hmm. The vision of the valley of the dry bones was a message first to the prophet and to the exiled people. It is also a message to us. As was the case with Ezekiel and the exiled Jewish community in Babylon, we also can go through experiences that demolish, that destroy, that devastate our ability to hope. It can come upon us that we have sunk so low and been down so low, so long that we no longer believe that up exists anymore. In 1975, the jazz genius Eddie Harris summed that feeling up in his colorful way with a song titled, Bad Luck Is All I Have. In, the minute, in that song, he said, I, my luck is so bad, I can't even look up on a good idea. But the constant message, by the way, I encourage you to listen to that song. It's a wonderful tune. Bad luck is all I have. But the constant message scripture teaches is that the spirit of God does not suffer from that disability. Thank God for the spirit that declares, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, oh my people, from bones to people. Mm. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. Mm. Mm. No matter how bad situations are, they do not disable God. And finally, finally, beloved, when God sets you in a graveyard, and yes, God will put you in a graveyard. Oh, yes. This, this valley of dry bones passage is in our sacred text to remind us that God will place us in a graveyard. God will put us in a graveyard-looking situation when God sets you in a graveyard and tells you to do something, do it and watch what happens. I'm talking about faithfulness in a graveyard. Faithfulness in a God graveyard. When God sets you in a graveyard, the Spirit of the Lord lifted me and took me to a valley in the vision. Ezekiel was moved to a graveyard situation and told to do something. Do it and watch what happens. In the vision, Ezekiel heard this command from the Spirit of God, prophesy to these bones mm. and say to them, oh, dry bones, here, catch that. Oh, dry bones, here. Doesn't that sound weird? Oh, dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. And later we read these words. So I prophesied as I, as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, catch this, as I prophesied, while I was doing what I was told that didn't look like it was going to do any good, while I was doing as I was told, there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, first to the bones, and now to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, 
come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded. He did as he was told. And the breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet. A vast multitude. Mm. In the vision, Ezekiel saw himself preaching in a graveyard. Preaching to dead, dry, skinless, disjointed bones. Preaching where nobody would have expected the message to be heard. Preaching about life in a graveyard. And as he faithfully obeyed the command to preach, things began to happen that nobody expected. In the vision, the graveyard of dry bones was transformed into a living multitude of people. Mm, from bones to bodies and then from bodies to people. Where are you going with this, Griffin? We, we do the memory of Martin Luther King Jr. a disservice, beloved, by merely calling him a civil rights leader. We do the memory of Martin Luther King Jr. a disservice by calling him a great orator and applauding his gift of oratory. Yes, yes. King was a civil rights leader. He did have powerful, pow powerful gifts of oratory, but he was much more, much more than a great orator, much more than a civil rights leader. Martin Luther King Jr. was God's prophet. He was God's Ezekiel in the graveyard called this world. King was God's Ezekiel in the graveyard called the Jim Crow South. Oh yeah, the Jim Crow South was King's Valley of Dry Bones. King was God's Ezekiel in the graveyard called Montgomery, Selma, Birmingham, Atlanta, Jackson, Albany, and Memphis. King was God's Ezekiel in the graveyard called Little Rock and Pine Bluff and Chicago. King was God's Ezekiel in the graveyard called New York City and Washington, D.C. King was God's preacher in the graveyard called the world and because he was God's prophet. Martin Luther King Jr. faithfully preached to the graveyard of dead, dry, fleshless, and disconnected bones of this world. Preached about the beloved community. Preached about hope. Preached about justice in an unjust world. Preached about peace in a war-torn and war-addicted world, preached about love in a hateful world. And as he preached, tired and desolate black people rose from the graveyard of segregation and the graveyard of inequality and stood on our feet. As King preached, Black people found a way to lift our voices and sing, and not only lift our voices and sing, but lift our voices and go vote. As he preached, black people found a way to defy white supremacist preachers and white supremacist politicians and white supremacist police officers and white supremacist pundits. As King preached, God worked through people. As King preached, God moved through people. As King preached, people began to hear that didn't look like they could hear. As King preached, people began to move who didn't look like they could move. As King preached, people began to act who looked like they'd been frozen in the graveyard of the world. 
As King preached, people began to speak about love and hope and truth. As King preached, people began to understand that there is something beyond the power of the graveyard. Ah, oh, my brothers and sisters, strange things began to happen to impoverished, marginalized, and downtrodden people throughout the world who had been counted as nothing, disrespected, and mistreated by the priests and princes and politicians of great empire and greed and war and injustice. But we not only do king a disservice, by refusing to recognize that he was God's prophet, that he was God's Ezekiel in our time. Worse than that, we do God a disservice. God called King. God set him down in the 20th century and commissioned him to confront politicians and pundits and weary oppressed people with God's call for liberation and justice and truth and peace. Because God was faithful, Jim Crow regime, that Jim Crow regime that King denounced and King protested, could not stop passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, no matter how long Strom Thurmond tried to filibuster. Because God was faithful, the vicious and corrupt voter suppressing and voter intimidating and election stealing ways of Dixiecrat politicians were outlawed. Because God was faithful and King preached until the Spirit of God breathed on our graveyard. He preached until we rose from the graves of subjugation and intimidation. He preached until we stood on our feet with straight backs and sang with James Brown about being black and proud. King preached until we sang, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. We sang it in jail cells. We sang, we shall overcome in funeral parlors. Yes, folks would gather in funeral parlors and sing, we shall overcome. Preach and people sang, we shall overcome at graveyards after burying loved ones murdered by white supremacy and its racism. And from the valley of Dry Bones graveyard, Martin Luther King Jr., Preached about seeing the glory of the Lord. Preached about God's truth that truth crushed will rise again. He preached God's message that the moral arc of the universe bends towards justice. He preached that God's truth is not standing still but marching on. He preached that the people who walked in darkness, would see a great light. King preached God's promise that we will get to the promised land would come to pass. And in the same way, in the same way that the Spirit of God inspired Ezekiel to preach to dispirited Jewish exiles in Babylon, and inspired Martin Luther King Jr. to preach to dispirited people in the United States and across the world. The same spirit still calls us. Now is the time for us to realize that the dead, dry, fleshless, and disjointed realities of our time are not beyond the power of God. Now is the time for us to remember and to proclaim that the realities of our graveyard are not the destiny for us and they are not the destiny for God's world. Yes, 
the realities of our graveyard experiences in the world are real. Yes, those realities cause us to think of ourselves as helpless and hopeless and abandoned by God, cut off. That's just like the these exiles in Babylon. Yes, it does seem as if humanity is in a valley of dead, lifeless, dry, and disjointed bones because of greed and hate and hypocrisy and cruelty and arrogance and bigotry. But remember, beloved, remember that the same spirit that asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? speaks the same question to us. The same spirit that asked Martin Luther King Jr. whether black people could shake off the effects of more than 300 years of oppression and state-sanctioned brutality calls us to be faithful prophets of God's goodness, faithful prophets of God's resurrecting power, faithful prophets of God's hope, faithful prophets of God's justice, faithful prophets of God's peace, faithful prophets of God's justice and joy, faithful prophets of God's victory. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves. Oh, my people, I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Spirit of the living God, thank you for the blessing of Martin Luther King Jr. Thank you for King's faithfulness. Thank you for his prophetic honesty. Thank you for allowing us to experience the fruit of his ministry in countless ways. Spirit of God, fall fresh on us. Speak to us. Take hold of us. Help us to know that your power, your passion, and your purposes for us are always greater than the graveyard realities of our experiences. Help us to hear and to heed your call to speak your truth even to the forces that appear to control our graveyard experiences so that we will proclaim your message of life, resurrection, restoration, and liberation. Spirit of the living God, speak to us. Touch us. Work in us. Empower us to live and to proclaim your liberating message of love and truth, justice and peace in our place and in our time. As it was proclaimed by Ezekiel, as it was proclaimed by Martin Luther King Jr. And by your prophetic people in every graveyard place and every graveyard time. So that we too may know and show that you, not the graveyard realities, are the sovereign Lord God. That you have spoken and that you will act. Amen. Somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere.
Listen. 